All right, I'm going to do something here. I don't know how this is going to show up on video, but I want you to focus. You can see overall, you can zoom real slow. Don't make everyone sick at home, but got a fence row here. Fence row's the size of the trees. This fence row's been here for years, decades. Not been plowed. This has been plowed every year for decades. This has not been plowed. Okay? There's no magic. There's no black magic here, folks. And I'm just... This is hard to show in video, but focus on the height of my big old sun hat. And I'm going to walk. I'm not bending over. I'm just going to walk. And all of a sudden, whoop. I'm three foot taller. I'm literally, you can tell by the angle of the camera. If you can't tell at all, you're looking up at me now. You know, and we take pictures of deer. We always get real low and try to look up at and make the antlers look bigger. Look at me now versus down there because this hasn't been plowed and it's always covered with thick grass and forbs and grapevines and tree roots. We're not losing any soil here, we're building soil. And as I come to you, you just watch, I'm coming to you. Through time, and I don't know how many years, first day I've ever been on this farm, the disking and farming practices, they've lost feet of soil, literally Hundreds of tons of soil, nutrients down the way. This, if I can, I don't know if I can. I'm going to try to get some grass out because the roots here are going to be so much better than they are out in the field. I don't, no. Man, it's so, these roots are so good. The plants are breaking. I'm going to try to pull some out. I don't know if I can. The roots are so healthy in there because there's a blend of species. They're breaking off. I, I'm not strong enough to get them pull out. I doubt anyone is. We give them up shovel, but I just want you to look right here. All the little hairs of the plants are covered in soil. They're all covered in soil. We're going to keep rolling. This is going to be, I mean, it's just, you can tell I could barely get them out. They were ripping off because they're so bound to the soil. There's zero erosion. Stay rolling. Just walk with me. Then we're going to go here where there's just a simple two-way blend. Pretty good. I, but I could pull it out and obviously not as mature. But you can see. See the dirt sticking all the way on here? That's because there's active microbes or bacteria going in and out of plant roots. This is a perfect example. And I'm 10 feet away. So I'm sure it's getting benefit from that fence row a little bit. But look at that, how that's sticking to it. And I whack it. I'm whacking it good. And it's still sticking. I got dirt all over me from whacking. Probably got some on the camera here. And they're just... Smell doesn't communicate the video, folks. But it smells like rich potting soil. Hang with me. Don't turn the camera off. We're just going to step out here in the commercial bean field. Lime, fertilize, you know, world's best technology. Pull up a bean. Oh. Soil so packed from the rain. Puny. Puny. Good. No dirt sticking. White roots. Come on out here a little bit further. I'm pulling up at random, folks. I didn't pre-test this or something. Which one do you think is going to be more nutritious? Which one would you like your deer, your cow, or you eating? Microbes are going in and out of this like crazy, building a much healthier plant. This is totally dependent upon synthetic inputs. And I'm going to share with you how this happened. I got this from a PhD in Australia. Brilliant, brilliant lady. I've learned so much. I've never met her. I want to meet her. Just watching her YouTube, folks. Just watching her YouTube. When we started getting synthetic fertilizer, all this stuff, we needed good science controls, right? Where we don't fertilize. And then the experimental where we fertilize. This is all done in a greenhouse. People don't know this happened. This is all done in a greenhouse. So what do they do? They fumigate the soil. They kill all the microbes, so it would be a fair test field. 
they don't want to think, well, maybe a buffalo died over here, you know, 50 years ago, 200 years ago, and that's a super fertilized spot. That would not be a fair test. That's good science. So we're going to fumigate everything, kill every insect, every microbe in the soil, put them in the greenhouse, put some plants, soybeans, whatever, in this pot, not add any newfangled at that time fertilizer to it. Go over here, add fertilizer. Well, of course, if you kill all the microbes in the soil, then the stuff where you add synthetic N, P, and K and whatever is going to grow better. Oh my gosh, we've solved the world. We're going to feed, you know, 7 billion people or 5 billion people at the time, whatever it was, make life better. Farmers only got to work two hours a day. It's going to be awesome. Bull crap. None of that worked out. It was good science, but they didn't know better because they weren't thinking that they didn't know that microbes actually go in and out of plant roots. The plant is photosynthesizing. It's got leaves. It's better than Elon Musk can build it using the sun's energy. Okay, sorry, Elon, but God's got a better plan. And then the bacteria, the microbes in soil, they're not photosynthesizing. they got to have carbon. Our body's about 70% carbon. A deer's about 70% carbon. You know, plants are carbon. These organisms are carbon. These microbes are in soil. Bacteria, i got dirt all on my hands. I'm probably fleeing it everywhere. And then... The microbes go in and out of plant roots, and they say there's a communication. Keith Burns has an excellent video about this. We'll put a link in the notes or on the screen or something called Carbonomics, like economics, carbonomics. I want everyone to watch that. It's beautiful. I learned so much from it. And these microbes are going in and out of roots, and they say, hey, man, i got to have carbon. I'm starving for carbon. I'll give you phosphorus. I'll give you boron. I'll give you whatever you need. Just give me carbon. And there's a communication. That's what's happening in the fence row. And slowly turn around so we don't make everyone at home throw up because they're seasick. We got a diversity of species growing and it's dark green, it's lush. No fertilizer, no lime, maybe some got pitched over there, I don't know. Same rain, got tree roots competing for it. It's thick and lush and awesome. By tonnage, infinitely better than this ag field. Because nature's working here. Man thought they knew more over here. Man does never know more, never knows more than nature. Like we know if we eat a perfectly balanced, healthy diet, no one does, I certainly don't. But if we eat a great diet, we almost never need to see a doctor. We know this. Most of our health problems are brought on because we don't eat right and we don't exercise. You know, we, we violate the laws. I know this, I've had two transplants. So I just got all excited because I got, you know, three foot more topsoil awesome looking growing plants roots i can't even get out of ground man to just a two-way blend that's better to a monoculture that's been plowed and when i get to the monoculture that's been plowed and hundreds or thousands of dollars of synthetic inputs added herbicide almost not a weed out it's been sprayed with chemicals folks no one gets up in the morning and goes i love the smell around us i just can't wait for that mist to hit me in the face on my foliar while i'm spraying my food plot no one says that. There's a better way. And I'm going to end with this. Aldo Leopold was the first guy in America called a wildlife biologist. Brilliant writings. If you haven't read a Sand County Almanac, I want you to read it. Beautiful read. At University of Georgia, where I was a student, it was like mandatory, right? If you breathe, you read Aldo Leopold back in the day. I think they've changed a lot now. And Aldo made beautiful observations, incredible observations. He had an old farm called a sand farm sandy eroded soil in a county in Wisconsin and the Sand County Almanacs about his observations throughout a year on that farm. But he wrote in another book actually, the more you know about ecology to study living things, organism systems, the sadder you will be driving around. And I, my wife will tell you, I'll drive by these highly eroded fields or see the spray trucks out in the fields, you know, whatever it is. And yeah, it bums me out. People are eating that. But I've changed that, and I'm a huge Aldo fan. The more we know, the more we can help people. We can do better. We can regenerate the planet, literally. We can make it better. And right here, in 10 yards or less, I'm in Canada, seven meters or less, we can, is a perfect example. I mean, there's a four year degree right here in seven meters of ecology and what's going on in plant communities and soil and how this all works. And I appreciate your patience. I hope you will share this with your friends as we all learn more and become better stewards of the resource.